Now, I wanted to get to the story about the top five lies about WikiLeaks, and I have Yale Lasowski from um, uh, Liberty in Exile here with us, whose show begins at 10 o'clock, and he's only here for two more weeks, and we will miss you, Yale. Well, thank you very much, Carl. Once again, you did give me the opportunity to come on the radio. This is where I did make my debut on the Montreal Airwave. So once again, oh, I you thank you for that. you have a great voice. Yeah, you would have gotten on the radio anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you have an awesome voice there. Um, okay. Now, these are the top five lies about WikiLeaks as presented. This, I got this from over at Daily Coast. Now, they say that WikiLeaks is indiscriminately posting material. In fact, they publish less than 1% of the State Department cables that they possess, 1,203 out of the 251,287. Now, what's more, it takes, it rather they make an effort to redact information that could harm innocent people. An effort appears to be growing more comprehensive, and they've asked the U.S. government to help redact information from each collection of documents. The U.S. government, by the way, refuses to help. Lie number two, people have been killed as a result of the WikiLeaks actions. There's no evidence that anyone has been killed. We reported on this earlier this week in a story from the Miami Herald, and they were quoting Pentagon spokespersons that did not want to be named. We wonder why. Um, and in fact, you know that if someone had been killed as a result, we would never stop hearing about it. It would be on the news cycle 24-7, especially Fox. In fact, there is no evidence anyone's received so much as a wedgie as a result of these releases, okay? Now, the information released by WikiLeaks is nothing new. The documents contain dozens of major scoops, not just support for things that we already knew, but brand new, important stories that could be and should be front page news. Instead, of course, we're talking about Julian Assange and the charges that he faces in Sweden. For example, we've learned that the U.S. military had an explicit policy of ignoring torture by Iraqi troops, and that was in the Iraqi war logs released back in October and went immediately down the memory hole. People ignored the story. Very sad. Um, we also learned that Hillary ordered diplomats to spy on UN officials, a blatant violation of the 1961 Vienna Convention, and the United States supported the coup in Honduras, which again, another story that just uh, barely creases the, um, um, you know, the waterline there as far as the mainstream media is concerned. Um, line number four, WikiLeaks are not journalists. Now, this charge made by people attempting to distinguish WikiLeaks from reputable outlets is irrelevant. You don't need credentials to be a journalist, and you don't have to be considered reputable to be reputable. Um, the notion that WikiLeaks, what WikiLeaks it does is just post documents is simply false. It posts news stories and analysis based on the documents. In terms of function, there's no meaningful difference between WikiLeaks and conventional news outlets. Line number five, Julian Assange is threatening to release information to protect himself from a rape prosecution. The poison pill that he's threatening to release has nothing to do with the rape charge. He's using it to protect himself from the U.S. government and other governments which could arrest him, or worse, in retaliation for releasing the documents. This isn't a far-fetched possibility, what with American politicians calling for his arrest and with the front-runner of the GOP nomination and possible future president saying he should be pursued with the same urgency we pursue al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders. And um, there you go. Now, that, that was actually said by Sarah Palin. So I, when, I, when I read that, I thought, well, you know, maybe she has a point. He should be pursued the same way they pursue Osama bin Laden, and that way he'd be free for the next 10 years. Uh. <laughs> they let him go. He'll be in the mountains of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Yeah, so I asked you to sit in because I wanted to hear what you, had to th what you had to say about the WikiLeaks. Well, it's, you know, it's very interesting, and it's, it's odd timing for me. And uh, I have trouble, and I covered it on my show, of course, but I have trouble trusting WikiLeaks Almost. It's as if we have this organization that can do no wrong, that comes out of nowhere, and they have this, this leader from Australia who was a part of this cult growing up, and his mother runs a puppet theater, and has been involved here and there, and was a hacker. It all seems too simple for me. And most of the information that's been put out, I have seen, and I've covered, and I've heard you, Carl, you've covered it as well. These are things that, for people who are in the know, people who have studied alternative media for the past couple of years, this is stuff that they've seen coming. Maybe this is what is finally going to get onto the pages of the USA Today, so where mainstream America can see, and the rest of mainstream, um, you know, the world can see. But... A lot of the information that they have now, like the point you said earlier, they have a lot of elites running scared. People are scared. Yeah. 
Well, now, I've said this before, that if the mainstream media were actually doing their job, Julian's uh, site would be redundant. We wouldn't need it at all. Mm -hmm. But they don't do their job, and so, like you say, the information, if you want to find it, you can find it, yeah. right? But it, it doesn't... You know, it just doesn't kind of get into the mainstream media. A lot of the stories are hidden in the back pages, particularly, for example, the story about the Honduras, mm -hmm. you know, where nobody's been paying attention to that yeah, at all. Cool. And it's just sometimes it's very ridiculous because they're like they want to prosecute WikiLeaks. Well, I mean, why don't they prosecute the New York Times, the the Guardian, the Der Spiegel? I mean, they're printing the same stories that WikiLeaks has. It's not a big deal. And then you have people coming out just idiotic statements. Well, we should get him and execute him for treason treason even though he's you know a citizen of australia you have to be treasonous to your own country but hey that's okay but they want to charge him under the espionage act something that was written in 1917 i mean we saw what happened with that that was the red scare huge loss of civil liberties all over the place people who just printed things in the newspaper critical of the president the administration and the war uh, back in world war one and do we really want to fall back to that i mean i see this as more journalistic integrity and the internet. Those are the two things that are going to be attacked with Julian Assange, with WikiLeaks, whatever may come of it. People are looking at creating licenses, trying to define what a publisher, what a journalist is. You know, whenever we get to an iffy moment like that, it's always dangerous for freedom and the freedom of speech, freedom to write, freedom to gather, whatever it may be. No, I agree with you. Um, and, and they will attack the internet. But um, have you been paying attention to the issue of net neutrality? And yeah, you know, I, I've been uh, looking at that. Of course, uh, there was the FCC court case a few months ago where the judges basically said the FCC had no authority to try to regulate the Internet or try to uh, mandate net neutrality. But then you've had Comcast, Netflix, been a lot of uh, antagonism there and a lot of conflict over really should companies be allowed to charge more. And uh, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to see. And it's... It's going to be kind of hard to uh, look towards Washington or Ottawa for answers on that. I mean, I haven't really seen any sensible solutions for right now. Right now, they just want to seek control. They don't have specific plans, as far as I've seen. Um, I believe that there is a plan outlined by the uh, FCC chairman, Julius uh, Granachowski, who uh, it includes five basic points. Meaningful transparency. That's always scary. Uh, <laughs> a ban on blocking lawful apps and services. Now, basically, the idea, for, for those of you who aren't familiar, the, uh, the idea is to prevent the larger cable and uh, um, information company, uh, phone companies from slowing down your internet. For example, allowing certain sites to load faster than others because they pay more money or they're larger corporations. Basically, they want to keep the internet as it stands. That's what net neutrality means. It just means that all the pages kind of you have equal access to because understand that people will stop visiting some of the smaller blogs, some of the smaller news sites if suddenly they take a long time to load, right? Uh, that, yes. And they're just trying to mandate bandwidth, which the U.S. hasn't really done, but it's definitely been done in Canada. If, if you have, any of you have Bell, you have Videotron, you know that your your bandwidth is limited. And we're the almost the only place in the world where that's mandated, and we get charged if we go over a certain limit. We've been screwed for a long time in Canada, especially telecommunications and Internet. Um, yes, <laughs> good point, and thanks for making it. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, bandwidth is, is charged for here in Canada. Now, um, the rest of the, uh, the plans, though, um, uh, they want to ban blocking lawful apps and services, a ban on unreasonable network management, an allowance for a certain amount of ISP network management and rules governing wireless to call for transparency and basically a no-blocking rule. So two Republican commissioners, Robert McDowell and Meredith Atwell Baker, have already said that they oppose the chairman's reckless proposal. Mm -hmm. So to me, that means the, the plan must have some merit. Um, you can, uh, I have this story logged and blogged over the cglo.com site. And um, basically, well, PC Magazine, pcmag.com, they have the rundown. And it includes um, just basically a ban on reasonable network management and an allowance for some network policing. Some, there will be some, right? Mm -hmm. They, they want to, blocking BitTorrent or Netflix or another program that eats up bandwidth Will be uh, will be deemed unreasonable, when that, which is exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Monitoring and adjusting your network to manage peak usage times or block harmful things like viruses and child porn—they're all for it. So that'll be in there. They will um, 
They will go after people who, but then that's where you get into the slippery slope. Yeah. Stuff. What are the limits? How do you define those limits of what child porn is or what download is or this or that? And well, you're only allowed to use, I don't know. I, whenever we seek to implement some sort of agency or a commission to put on control, it's as if their mandate is always expanded. I mean, the, the TSA used to be an organization with 200 employees. I mean, now they have over 60,000 people. That's, um, now, you're talking about the, the people who pat people down here? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it used to be 200 people. It was in, just in a few airports, but now it's in every single airport, 60,000 workers, and they're violating you up and down. Oh, gravy. I, I wasn't aware of that at all. Um, and um, I actually have, like, uh, I'm, I'm lifted with the help of, uh, what was it, Tech Block, uh, techblog.com. 15 facts about net neutrality and we won't go through them um, because it'll just be me reading. Um, so what other issues are you going to cover on your show uh, this morning? Uh, I got a, a couple of things. Uh, for me, things that are pretty important is kind of seeing what's going on in the United Kingdom. Of course, you have students, you have people who are basically my age who are going to see their tuition rise from whatever they're paying now, and they're raising the cap, up to 10000 This is up $10,000. I mean, in Canada and Quebec, we pay probably around $1,000 a semester to go to university. Now in England, the cap is going to be ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. That's outrageous. It's amazing. and But the people are doing what they should be doing. They're going out in the streets, and they're getting pissed. They Actually, there was a picture of the royal car. You had, basically, you had Prince Charles going around with Camellia. He's going around and... Poof, gets hit with a paint can. Uh, people are angry. They really are. And it, you see the youth in this country doing absolutely nothing. I mean, we do have some little activist groups, but in, in London, England, they are roaming the streets. They stormed the treasury yesterday. These people are angry. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, again, I'm with you on this. Uh, I really wish people would become more activists. People, I find, that they, they've kind of locked themselves into little bubbles. They have... They have their 10 favorites that they're talking to on the phone almost at all times. Mm -hmm. And when they're not talking to those 10 people, they're listening to, to their iPods. Well, it's become an acceptance of, of the status quo and sort of what's been, what's been given to us. And say, oh, we're just very docile. We'll say, well, this is how it's supposed to be. That's how it's always been, right? Like money. Money used to be backed by gold and all. Now it's just paper and the government tells you how much it's worth. Well, you know, it's always been like this. It doesn't matter if it's not really worth anything anymore. What do we know? It's just money. For me, it's always the same thing. It's just accepting constantly what's been told by us. And these are lies that are told every single day. Uh, another thing that I'd like to cover on my show is Pearl Harbor and what's been told about that. We had, we had the anniversary on the, the 7th, the 69th anniversary. And you had FDR coming out and saying, we were deliberately attacked. It was an unprovoked attack. Even though we cut off all of Japan's oil for six months we wanted to go to war. We wanted to get attacked. That's the whole point. And we're not taught that in history books. There's a status quo that's put in place, that's thrown in front of us, and we're forced to accept it. And those of us who don't seek out alternative information, we become prisoners of that info. So now when you say that it's not in history books and you talk about what's in the history books, were you paying attention to the, the story about the Texas textbooks? Uh, that was a while ago. I think they were rewriting the history of the uh, Founding Fathers, something of the sort. Yeah. Did did you find that alarming? I mean, it depends on what angle. A lot of uh, religious people now and those who are active in politics like to say, well, the Founding Fathers were big Christians. Uh, you know, the, that's the whole point. It, we're founded a Christian nation. And that's sort of the tradition that they want to put out. But, you know, in the Federalist Papers and in the, the early founding documents, they knew that religion was just as dangerous as the king was, as a tyranny was. And they understood the importance of completely separating what happens in the public lives and what happens in the private lives of, of citizens. So, I mean, what's going on now in rewriting history is always a problem. It's constantly being done now every single day. We hear thousands of years of history that are just redacted down to seconds of sound bites, and we just have to passively accept because that's what it is when you watch television. It's accept, reject, accept, reject. That's all it is. Information thrown at you. Actually, in interestingly enough, or maybe sadly enough, Glenn Beck has been uh, rewriting the history of Rome on his program. I don't know if you're aware. Uh, you probably... Don't watch it, no. Yeah, yeah, no, couldn't be bothered. But yeah, he's been rewriting the history of, of the Roman Empire. And, they, I, you know, a fifth, a fifth grade student could have debunked the things he said, but Media Matters actually got 
historians to do it, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to go through.